gunfire echoing through Port-au-Prince after the president was assassinated. Then, just 36 hours after a group of more than two dozen Colombians and two Haitian Americans allegedly killed the president, most would either be detained or declared dead. This is how that happened, according to a source with knowledge of the operation to track them down. Nighttime video from around the time of the president's death quickly went viral, where you can hear a suspect claiming there was a DEA operation ongoing. Later, a convoy of five cars can be seen leaving the area with ease, but down the road, a trap was being set. As the convoy traveled down Kenscoff Road, a roadblock was ready. Heavily armed security forces would not let them pass without a fight. Arriving and seeing they couldn't go any further, the convoy stops, part of which you can see here. Our source says the suspects jumped out and saw this building across the road. They race toward it, immediately taking the stairs to the second floor. It's in this building that these alleged mercenaries will begin defending themselves. But at the same moment they're coming in here, according to our source, Haitian security forces are making a crucial decision. They know that these alleged attackers have limited food, water, ammunition, and no power. So they essentially decide to wait them out. About 12 hours later, after baking in 90 plus degree Haitian heat, authorities throw tear gas in front of the building. It's enough to force negotiations, and the Colombians inside eventually send out four people, including this man, one of two Haitian Americans whom authorities have detained. He's joined by the other Haitian American and two Haitian hostages, a pair of police officers who were at the president's house. According to our source, at some point during the negotiations, a group of the Colombians still here come out of this building and start heading up this hill on the back side of the building. And eventually they make their way to a seemingly strange destination. Just about 100 meters up the hill from the building lies the Taiwan Embassy. Our source thinks the Colombians went there because it wasn't an easy place for police to enter given its diplomatic immunity. In order to get all the way here to the embassy, though, they had to walk through a pretty residential neighborhood. And according to our source, someone tipped off authorities that this group of heavily armed men was here. When they arrived at the embassy, they found a largely empty building except for two security guards whom they tied up. Security forces quickly surrounded the embassy and then turned their attention back to the building below, where they believed a few suspects remained. It was time to go in. A small assault team went in on the ground floor and were met with fierce fire that you can hear from the handful of Colombians that were still inside. The hour-long firefight shattered windows, scarred concrete ceilings and walls, and in the end, the government says at least three Colombians died in the fighting. The next day, with Taiwan's permission, authorities went into the embassy. Our source says authorities checked CCTV cameras and found nearly a dozen Colombians in a room who ended up giving up without more fighting. Nearly a half dozen still haven't been found. Matt Rivers connecting us uh, now from the Haitian capital of Port-au-Prince. And what, what is the latest on this investigation? And, Matt, this Florida resident who supposedly wanted to become Haiti's president, what more do we know about him? Yeah, so let's start there then. The 63-year-old man, Christian Emmanuel Sonon, uh, he apparently was the one who recruited and organized uh, this group of mercenaries, not only recruiting them, but also organizing them here on the island in the months leading up to uh, this assassination. Um, he apparently, according to authorities, wanted to, quote, capture the presidency. Exactly what that means, they didn't say. We don't know if he has legal representation. We don't know what he has officially been charged with, if anything, but that is basically what we know about him. Interestingly, another part of this is that my colleague Evan Perez in the United States yesterday reported last night uh, that several of the suspects involved in this assassination were also directly connected to U.S. law enforcement agencies as informants, including at least one who worked with the Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA actually confirming that. And as you saw in the piece, Becky, 
during this assassination, one of these suspects says DEA operation, DEA operation. The DEA acknowledged that. They say they were aware of it, but said no one involved in this assassination was working on behalf of the DEA. But still, it just feels like the connections between the United States and what happened here in Haiti keep growing and growing and growing. And so you're going to see the continued involvement of U.S. law enforcement agencies during the prosecution of these assailants. Uh, it's going to be fascinating to see where this ends up.